Hi everyone and welcome to the Free Range Diva. So today I'm giving you part two of my overview of the health books that have impacted my life over the last few years. To those of you who watched part one with such enthusiasm, I want to say thank you. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I will link it below so you can go check it out. I'm reviewing a book called Deep Nutrition. And uh, on that video, one of my viewers, her name is Peggy, uh, left this amazing comment. She shared her story about growing up uh, on sort of her family farm and her you know, extended family farm. And it was just an inspiring story. And so I wanted to uh, make sure you all saw it. So I pinned it. So it's at the top of that comment. But um, yeah, if you get a minute, go ahead and, and check out uh, Peggy's story because it's really, really uh, very inspiring. And um, offers hope for those of us who want to sort of do better to improve the quality of our food. Not unlike, uh, you know, I live in a suburb, but um, we share our figs and our lemons with our neighbors and they share apples and oranges that they grow in their yard with us. So it can work uh, and her story is very inspiring. So, all right, just go ahead and check her out. And I also wanted to mention that if you're interested in following a traditional diet, there are resources uh, that can help you um, get quality food at, you know, uh, a, not a bargain price, but certainly a reasonable price. If, you've, if you're interested, for example, in CSAs, uh, which is like a community-supported uh, farms, um, if there are any in your neighborhood, you can go to an, a website called localharvest.org and uh, put in your zip code and they will tell you if there are you know, CSAs in your neighborhood. Uh, farmers markets, in fact, since I started going to farmers markets, I've noticed, especially this year, prices are coming down. So the more of us that, that uh, frequent farmers markets, the better the value and uh, the better the pricing. Um, also, they have food delivery boxes. I know that Blue Table, Blue Apron, I think, is a popular one, and there are a couple of others that I know are inv are available in my area, and they're just conveniences that make it easier if you, you know, don't have a lot of time to shop. You know, food can come to your door. So I guess we'll start kind of in chronological order. The book that uh, really started started it all for me was this one. It's called Master Your Metabolism by Jillian Michaels, the personal trainer from Biggest Loser. But this is her own uh, story of how she went from, you know, basically living on diet cokes and low fat and, and you know, eating as little as possible and still uh, gaining weight, which as a personal trainer is just not acceptable, obviously. That's your livelihood, being fit. And uh, couldn't understand why, you know, like even though she was barely consuming anything, um, she wasn't losing weight. Basically, she talked about the things in our environment and in our food that literally um, cause our metabolism to shut down. Our metabolism is that that system in the body that, you know, burns calories when it when uh, you know you need it for energy and and. Uh, is responsible for basically energy production and output in the body. And so she had, I believe, over 300 um, endocrinologists that she consulted for this book, and they're all listed in here. The things that she talks about here have now become sort of common knowledge in the health world. Things like endocrine disruptors, BPA plastics, Teflon, um, phthalates, and uh, you know, fluoride. These are, are things that we kind of accept now. Well, maybe not fluoride so much, but uh, that we accept as, as being bad for us. And indeed, like mass marketing is now phasing out things like phthalates and BPA. But um, yeah, she everything in this book was like way ahead of when, you know, it became mainstream. She talks about hormones, not only uh, what the sex hormones like estrogen, although she does go into estrogen and, and the different types of estrogen and why uh, natural uh, estradiol and uh, the estrogen that's released when you're pregnant are good, but the estrogen that's released by fat cells is a carcinogen. And so she gets into that. She also talks about other hormones like leptin and ghrelin, one of which is responsible for telling your brain that you're full and the other is responsible for telling your brain that it's 
that you're hungry and how endocrine disruptors can screw up those messages so that you're producing ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, when you're not hungry. And uh, when you are full, leptin never shows up. So uh, there's a ton of information in here. This is a really easy, easy read. Uh, I know that um, when, I, the, when I read it, the, the first thing I did after reading this was to switch out my toothpaste, my deodorant, and uh, my sunscreen, all things that you, we use on a daily basis. And I switched them out to healthier options that did not contain fluoride, aluminum, or um, uh, chemical sunscreens. Uh, this is a great book, highly recommend it, and uh, it started everything for me. So Master Your Metabolism, Jillian Michaels. I want to also briefly mention uh, a book that I don't have right now. It's called And the reason is because I gave it to a friend who had a cancer diagnosis, but it uh, was and is sort of my Bible in terms of how to use supplements to augment uh, the therapies that you're being given for various ailments um, and how to use supplements to prevent those ailments. Or once you're, you know, like over those, those whatever, whether it's arthritis or cancer or, you know, uh, diabetes, whatever your diagnosis, you can help to uh, support your body back to its natural state of health by using diet and supplements. And, and uh, it's a great book. It has a, what it's called a healing diet in it that helps people, um, you know, kind of get away from processed foods and eat a more whole and nutritious diet and then kind of go from there. Next up is a book called Back to butter. This is by um, Molly Chester and her mother Sandy, whose name I cannot pronounce. I think it's share. I can't even try it, but I'll write it out for you. And this book came into my life uh, after I had the, my um, major allergic reaction, and I couldn't figure out what kinds of foods I could and couldn't eat. I hadn't at that point put together things like. Um, corn derivatives that would, you know, be applied, for example, let's say a tomato. At one, you know, it was like so confusing because I would eat a tomato, you know, take a bite of it and I'd be okay one day. And then the next day I'd take another bite of a tomato and my throat and mouth would start burning. I'd start having that, that reaction. And I, you know, I was, I, I didn't know at that point what I could and what I couldn't eat. It hadn't, you know, I hadn't learned yet that tomatoes are gassed with ethylene gas you know they're picked green so that they can be shipped and then while they're in the trucks they're given a corn derived uh, gas and then they're coated with a corn derived wax which is why I wasn't able to eat like your average grocery store tomato uh, you know I've, I thought that I was allergic to like nightshade plants because I also had similar issues with potatoes and meat I mean, it was a very frustrating time to say go and buy like a, a, a piece of ground beef um, and cook it up and not be able to eat it. It would burn my mouth because it had been sitting on a soaker pad that was soaked in a corn derivative. I didn't know that. So I was pretty much living on things like peanut butter and think thin bars and um, bananas. So um, anyway, all of that I said to uh, say that I was you know, hungry for anything that I could learn about nutrition. And I went to this meetup uh, that was a, a speaker that had a speaker talking about how she had um, overcome, you know, food allergies and things with this particular diet. So I went and it was uh, Molly Chester who was speaking. And briefly, because her testimonial was so powerful, I don't think I can do it justice, but very briefly, she uh, at that point was in her early 30s and had uh, been a, a vegetarian and then vegan for over, you know, half her life. She started when she was like in her teens, like 14, I think she said. And um, it had left her with uh, PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, that was so bad. She had been to uh, several um, uh, specialists and um, they had all, you know, just said, you know, you, you're never going to be able to have children. You know, this is, this is, she said it, that um, it was one of the worst cases of PCOS that um, her doctors had seen. So she ended up going to this uh, doctor who was also a nutritionist 
who uh, did a battery of food allergy tests on her and it turned out that the only thing that she was allergic to was soy. And uh, the doctor recommended a healing diet that uh, is the basis, that is the diet that she chronicles in this book. And uh, it involves the, basically everything that I talked about in the deep nutrition video. But this book is uh, a cookbook and a practical guide of how to, put, how to do the diet, how to put it together. She lives on a farm. And, she, uh, and so she uh, has pictures in here of her farm animals and uh, her property, but also of food, things that you would normally, for example, here's a recipe for meatballs and mushroom gravy. So it's something that you would normally eat, but it's prepared uh, in a way that uh, gives you maximum nutrition using uh, healthier, you know, meats from healthy animals. So it's not, you know, out of the realm. Here's a meatloaf recipe. Here's baked beans, um, baked acorn squash with a kale and pancetta stuffing, which looks excellent. Uh, she also talks about, um, you know, the components of the diet, like ferment, fermentation, soaking, and 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 how to soak your grains and your beans and then you know how to cook them. She has the first part of the book uh, is about fats and oils. What are healthy fats and oils? Where to, uh, what is sustainable meat? Where to find it? Dairy, nuts and seeds and then natural sweeteners and, and then part two is, is um, not only recipes but it's cooking techniques. How to ferment if you're interested in doing that. How to use whey to as a as a whey from like yogurt, you know the the clear liquid in yogurt. How to use that as a preservative. How to make things like your own ketchup or mustard or mayonnaise, uh, as well as you know regular uh, just dinner ideas, breakfast ideas. And so I was very lucky to have I purchased this at that uh, workshop and got her to sign it. So, uh, yeah, so this taught me how to eat. The first, right after this, I went to a farmer's market and I saw a uh, vendor there who had chicken and the sign right in front of her stall said, chicken raised on pasture. And then she listed all the things that it wasn't given, including corn, soy, um, you know, alfalfa. It was basically chicken that had been raised eating what a chicken normally would eat, anything that it would forage off the ground, so bugs and worms. And and uh, I bought, uh, you know, a piece, because it was pretty expensive, so I bought a couple of pieces, came home, cooked them up, and was, it was like I, had, I hadn't eaten anything. It was like my body was starving, literally. It was an, an emotional moment for me to finally have food that my body could accept, and it understood, and... Uh, you know, she talks uh, at that workshop, she talked a lot about the first time she ate a piece of grass-fed beef, you know, after being a vegan and vegetarian for so long and what, and, and described a very similar sort of cathartic emotional experience as well. So I uh, highly recommend this book if you, because there are other books out there that are traditional foods cookbooks, but this one is really easy to understand and easy to follow and the others tend to get a little more bogged down in technique and things like that. So back to butter. Uh, very, And I will link also to her blog. I believe she still has it going because at the end of her workshop, she announced that she was pregnant with her first child. And since then, I believe she's had uh, another, she has two children now. So yes, this diet healed her of the PCOS. Okay, jumping, uh, if you uh, are new to green beauty and you want, and you find it very confusing to know what ingredients are good, what ingredients are bad, you know, what's chemical, what isn't, this is a book uh, called No More Dirty Looks. It's by Siobhan O'Connor and Alexandra Spunt. And this is a very easy, you know, kind of book that you can grab if you're, uh, you know, if you're unsure about something. Uh, it breaks down ingredients, which is what I find um, most helpful, that un in a chapter called Dirty Ingredients. And 
it, it'll list uh, phenoxyethanol, for example, which is what I just turned to. And it tells you what it is, it tells you what it's used in, it tells you if there are any other names for it, and then it tells, it tells you what it considers the ugly factor and information, you know, like what studies have been done to determine how unsafe, what are your risk factors, if it's something that, it, that you know, if it's a small enough amount, if it's worth the risk, and also if it's, if it's been banned in any countries other than the U.S. Because, as you know, we don't ban anything, at least not in cosmetics here. So it's a really good, uh, you know, like here's another one on aluminum, if you're curious about aluminum. So that, you know, that's the first part of the book, and that's, that's really um, why I'm recommending it and why I, you know, will grab it. Because if I just want to quick information about something, then I can get it right from here. And then uh, it goes on to list, um, you know, like diet and lifestyle recommendations, how to grow healthy, strong nails. So there's a lot of like uh, beauty uh, tips and things in here, as well as makeup recommendations, um, you know, skincare recommendations and things like that. Now, this book is pretty, you know, it's, it's dated. Yeah, I don't know when this was first published, but I know I picked this up on Amazon for like less than four dollars. So uh, it's it's been around, you know, for a while. But like I said, the info in it is still really useful, especially when you're just starting out. So uh, if you're a smoothie lover like me and uh, you're kind of getting bored with your basic blueberry kale almond milk smoothie, um, I have a book for you especially if you like looking at beautiful pictures of food. This is called Superfood Smoothies by Julie Morris, and it uh, is an introduction to more um, super nutritional ingredients that, uh, that are very nutrient-dense that you might not have thought of or heard of or might not realize are, near your, you know, are found near your market. It has uh, basics for smoothies. Um, it looks at ingredients like um, you know, like your like things that, that are kind of common, like acai, for example. But it also uh, goes into more exotic ingredients like maca and, um, you know, how to build your own uh, smoothie so that you've got a good, um, uh, you know, a balance of protein, fat, and antioxidant action going on. Beautiful pictures. And this recipe uh, is for a sea buckthorn carrot smoothie, which is crazy, but it introduces chia seeds as a way to get fiber into the diet. Uh, but And uh, I did not know that sea buckthorn you could eat until I just opened this up right this minute. Here's more of it. Here's something called a mint chip smoothie, which looks gorgeous. And this one has um, spinach, bananas, cashew, cashews, cacao nibs, and a chlorella powder in it, which is the, you know, sort of superfood ingredient. Oh, look at this. Raspberry peach. I mean, in the colors, it's great to get like, the, you know, I personally like my smoothies to look like what they are. So I don't like putting like green stuff in everything because everything, I don't want everything to be green. I want green smoothies to be green and then other smoothies like this raspberry one to be the color that they should be and this one has peaches raspberries dates and um, uh, dried mulberries is the uh, is the superfood you know ingredient that she's she's saying that here that you can use those in place of the dates for example to give it a superfood boost uh, she also has a YouTube channel I think it's still around uh, but yeah this is um this is a great uh, a book for the smoothie beginner who wants to try some more, you know, who wants to be a little more adventurous in their, you know, with their blueberries and their kale. And then the last book, it, I actually, you know, I, I got this book because uh, it's called The Nature of Animal Healing. And when Duffy was a puppy, he had Parvo, and then he had Mange, and he had a mother who was who was pulling out her hair trying to figure out how to get this dog healthy so that he would stay healthy and uh, you know I fought like like crazy I mean he was obviously a very strong um, you know had a strong constitution to get to battle back from both of those but I was determined that I was going to do the best for him in, and make sure that he stayed healthy the rest of his life and this was the book that I found and it's called The Nature of Animal Healing it's by Martin Goldstein, DVM. 
And uh, he says, the definitive holistic medicine guide to caring for your dog and cat. And this covers everything, but the the beginning, the middle, and the end of this book has one message. It all begins with food. And it uh, shows you how to feed, say, a, um, a natural, you know, like cooked diet if you don't want to serve, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to feed them or you can't feed them packaged food. It also has recommendations of packaged foods that are very, very healthy. Um, and this is dated, and there's like probably dozens more options now available of organic and, you know, raw and, and healthy packaged foods. But it talks about a healing crisis. It really teaches you how if you can get out of the body's way and support it instead of um, minimizing uh, symptoms, that the body can and will go through a healing process on its own. Uh, he, he talks about cancer, he talks about the diseases, he lists uh, a section where he lists uh, an alphabet of ailments and he goes through every, you know, all of the feline and canine diseases from anemia to diabetes to cancer to, you know, everything basically, um, eye issues, whatever you may have. And this sort of got me thinking about how I viewed my own health. Uh, which was, um, it all begins with food. And you can, uh, you know, the body can heal itself if we get out of its way. And, you know, even faster if we support it and stop doing those things to it that, um, that make us sick, basically. So also this book uh, led me to my veterinarian because uh, my veterinarian worked with him and he does uh, list him in here as a, you know, good veterinarian in this book part of the world. So uh, the nature of animal healing, uh, not just for animals, but for us too. Well, everybody, uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Uh, if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed uh, my book list. I hope you, you know, got some good information. Everything will be listed below. So if you, you know, want to um, read more or, you know, uh, purchase, I've got links below where you can find them. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, that that's that's. I'm just gonna wrap it up and say thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up uh, if you enjoyed it. Uh, share it with uh, your friends on social media, and of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because I would love to have you, and uh, I love you know getting to know my subscribers uh, in the comments below. So, everybody, thank you so much again, and uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you very very soon. Bye.